Hello friends! Last week in my video about salmonberry plants, I talked a little bit about how salmon grow. And I mentioned that we have salmon in Stony Creek. You may have gone for a walk through Stony Creek on one of the trails and maybe gone close to the water. And if you're lucky, you may have even seen some little tiny baby salmon in the creek. There should be quite a few right now Usually this time of year, we start seeing those baby salmon, and those babies are actually called fry. <laughs> it's a funny name. We have two teachers at our school who actually grow the salmon in their classroom. Mrs. Starrett and Mrs. Brennan do that every year, and then sometime around Mother's Day, when the fish are big enough, they release the salmon into Stony Creek. And often around that Mother's Day weekend, there's a whole group of people, I think brought in from the city of Abbotsford, who go and do a big salmon release down in the creek as well. So they're helping to provide our creek and our rivers with lots of salmon. So if you go for a walk down there, hopefully you'll be able to see some. Now that makes me think about those salmon that live in the creek and how we want to protect them so if we had been together for our nature walks, you would have heard Mrs. Berg and I talking lots about being really careful and mindful about how, how we walk and where we go when we're in the creek. We didn't get to start that yet together. But because there's so many creatures that live in the creek, not just salmon, but lots of other ones as well, it's really important that we're super careful about where we step and how we walk through the creek. It's okay to do that. But you have to think that your bodies are so big and stepping really hard or jumping or throwing things in the creek could hurt the salmon or the other creatures that live there. So if you decide to go exploring, use really nice, soft, gentle, slow feet when you walk through the creek and you'll be doing your part to help take care of some of the creatures that live there. So my story today for you is called Salmon Creek. And it's by two authors, Annette LaBox and Karen Raychuk. Look at those beautiful salmon. These were Sumi's first memories. Water over stones, the scent of creek, darkness so complete. She could barely imagine another world larger than the egg case enclosing her. Sumi was blind, but she could hear the wind whispering through the cedars. She could hear the creek stones lifting and falling as salmon mothers built their nests. And if she pressed against the curve of her egg, she could hear her salmon mother singing. Home is where the scent of cedar and creek. Home is the journey's end. At dusk, a bear wandered down to the creek. He sat on his hunches, feasting on salmon. Beneath the creek, Sumi turned in her egg, strained to hear from her little stone bed, a song of a journey, a seed of a dream. I follow the stars and the river's pull. I followed the salty air. The seed was wide and beautiful, but my heart wasn't there. And later, as a salmon mother drifted gently downstream, their songs grew fainter. A windstorm shook the last of the maple leaves from the trees. The leaves fell on the mossy log, then joined the creek. Can you think of what season that might be? A time of year when all the leaves come off the trees? Are you thinking fall? You're right. A flock of eagles picked at the salmon bones left by the bear. The scent of salmon lingered in the air. Sumi slept until midwinter, and when she woke, she could see. She had two large eyes and a delicate tail. She carried a yolk sack beneath her. Thrusting her tail against her sack, she pushed and pushed till her egg case split open, and she tumbled headfirst into the creek. She was as small as a pine needle. Scared and alone, she hid beneath the gravel till her strength had grown. 
When her egg sack was empty, empty, she swam upward, followed a school of fry. Do you remember me using that word a few minutes ago? The fry, and they're in our creek right now. Do you know what season it is right now? Spring. She widened her nostrils, memorized each scent, moss and fern and cedar, maple and damp earth, her birth creek home. As the days became warmer, algae grew on Salmon Creek. Ducks dabbled in the bright green bloom, dragonflies and mayflies fed there, and the fry fed on insects and larva, larvae. Sumi swam in quiet pools, hunted among schools of silver fry, hid from the heron's watchful eye. Summer turned to fall. When winter came, snow fell on Salmon Creek. A raccoon crept silently through the icy stream. Beneath the root, Sumi woke and slept, dreaming of spring. Spring arrived again with a torrent of water, rushing, rumbling, roaring, tumbling. The current carried the fry headfirst downstream, past ducks and herons with hungry beaks, past gulls and dippers eager to feast. The creek hurled the fry over the rocks and sweepers tossed them against roots and tangled creepers. Sumi's fin grew battered and her tail torn, but the current drove her on and on and on until she reached the river. Where the banks grew steeper, the rapids grew stronger, the water deeper. She swam down the river, her sides stripes faded, her skin secreted a fine mucus coat. Her body grew longer and sleeker and stronger. And one morning she woke to find herself a smolt. It's a bigger salmon. She swam past factories and farms and forests. She swam past tugboats and log booms and small towns. She swam past dog docks and cottages and children playing till she came to a place where the river meets the sea. She circled the estuary, gazed out at the bay to the water beyond where her new home lay. She then smelled something sweeter than her birth creek in swing, spring Sweeter than the fragrance of cedars and stones and salt sweet memory buried deep in her bones, the sea. She tasted salt water, her body felt strange, little by little her insides changed. Then she joined a school of salt drinking smolts ready at last to swim to the sea. On sunny days, where the sea was filled with a pale green light, Sumi herded herring into sea caves or lazed in beds of kelp. She learned to dodge nets of fishermen and dive from whales and seals. She feasted on sand lance and candlefish and shrimp-like creatures called krill. The krill turned her flesh into brilliant pink. As the months passed, her body grew longer, her scales brighter, her muscles stronger. And then one summer, everything changed. Perhaps it was eggs forming deep inside her that made Sumi yearn for the creek of her birth that made her remember the scent of damp earth or algae bloom on a summer night or the taste of a mayfly caught at mid flight. Then Sumi sat out for the stream of her birth. She followed the stars in the pull of the earth. Heart racing, she traced her journey homeward back to the place where the river meets the sea. The estuary was crowded. She was not alone. Thousands of salmon were heading home. They entered the river spellbound, scales glistening, life quickening within them. River streaming over their gills, bellies swelling with eggs in the milt, no longer eating, no longer sleeping, fighting the river's will. Sumi climbed up rapids and leaped over falls. She dove under logs and tor roaring torrents. She rode the currents, her muscles straining, her fins tattered, her strength waning. But she wouldn't stop. She couldn't stop. Till she came to a creek with a wonderful smell. And she swam up that creek as if 
caught in a spell. A silvery gang of salmon raced by her, and among them, Nullux searching for a mate. He swam toward Sumi, nuzzling her sides. Sumi leaped from the creek, fins outspread, arched her back, and then shot straight ahead. Nullux followed her leap and shadowed each fin stroke. As Sumi swam in fresh water, her body felt strange. The salmon around her began to change. The males grew fangs with fierce hooked noses. Their scales become colored of the color of roses. Their crowns grew green as leaves in spring. And then one morning they swam to a place where, they, where an ancient cedar leaned over a stream, where the water ran a pure pale green, where the stones shimmered with a golden sheen. And Sumi knew by the smell and the taste that this was her birthplace the place she loved best, a perfect place to build her nest. She lay on her side, waved her tail like a cat, and slapped the water till the stones parted. And in the hollow she laid the, a thousand of, she laid thousands of eggs, like pale orange suns sinking into the silt. Then Nullock showered her eggs with milk, and the water of the creek flowered white like milk. And quickly, Gently, Sumi flicked her tail, and then the gravel drifted into the nest, covering her eggs like secrets. Sumi and Nalek drifted in the shallows. They were spawned out, exhausted. Their sides were battered, their fins were torn, their skin had thickened, their scales worn. But they had chased a dream and caught it. They had swum all the way to the sea and back. Sumi circled the creek, guarding her eggs. She bared her curved teeth, slapped her tail, scared off pairs of spawners from her red. The red is that group of eggs that she laid. Sumi gazed at the sky. It was radiant, a deep blue-green. She could hear the wind whispering through the cedars. She could hear the creek stones lifting and falling as Sam and mothers built their nests. Small insects nestled in the folds of her skin, and later, as she drifted gently downstream, Sumi sang to her eggs. Home is where this is the scent of the cedar and creek. Home is the journey's end. At dusk, a bear wandered down to the creek. It sat on its haunches, feasting on salmon. A windstorm shook the last of the maple leaves from the trees. The leaves fell on the mossy log and joined the creek. A flock of eagles picked at the salmon bones left by the bear. The scent of salmon lingered in the air. And on our last pages, we have the full life cycle of a salmon. The eggs, here these the eggs in the rocks. So if you think in Stony Creek, if there are salmon eggs laid there under the rocks. And if we go into the creek and we're jumping on the rocks or throwing the rocks, we could be disturbing those groups of salmon eggs. And they start to grow and they get a little bigger and a little stronger. And they make their way from Stony Creek out to the Fraser River. And they swim all the way from the Fraser River into the ocean, the Pacific Ocean for us. You can actually take a look on Google Earth and you can find the tree line where a Stony Creek is and you can follow the tree line all the way out and it goes to the river. And you can see the big Fraser River. You can follow that all the way out. And you can take a look at where it opens to the ocean. The salmon make that big long journey all the way out. And they come all the way back when they're big enough ready to lay new eggs. It's pretty cool. I hope you get a chance to go take a look at the creek and see some salmon. And please let us know if you do. Thank you friends.